Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. Today I'm doing a review on the Element Optics Helix 60-24x50 first focal plane rifle scope. This one has milliradian adjustments on the turrets as well as a milliradian reticle, but it's also available in four minutes of angle compatibility where the reticle and turrets all match each other. I'm going to do a box test, show you how it works on target, show you how the adjustments work and prove the tracking capability of this scope. It's a scope I've used over the last six months on quite a few review rifles, both rimfire and centerfire, and a lot of air rifles, which give me more capability and more opportunity to use them and, let's say, abuse them and make sure these turrets are dialing consistently and reacting to what I think they should be from the dopes I've previously recorded. I'm also going to show you some footage filmed through the scope with the PARD 007S on the back, which, okay, isn't the perfect capability, but in terms of usability, gives you that excellent second chance to look at what your shooting activities got up to and how you might learn from them in future. The scope is supplied with both flip-up lens covers and elasticated rubber ones to fit over the objective and ocular lenses, giving protection and use. It's a 30mm tube and plenty of space fore and after the saddle to space out for exact fit on your rifle and set the eye relief you need. It's long eye relief, it's 100mm, which means you've got maximum recoil capability for larger rifles. Elevation in milliradians is anti-clockwise for up, and there is also a zero stop capability which you can set up by removing this top cap. To count the number of turns you progress through, there's a vernier scale showed underneath the elevation turret here. Just dial back down to the zero stop to get back to where you started. Parallax control on the left side runs all the way down to 10 meters and all the way up to infinity. As well as extending rubber covers, you get flip up caps for both lenses. If you take the rear one off, you'll see the fast focus eyepiece to allow your eye to focus clearly on the internal reticle. This compensates for the natural diopter variation of human eyesight. Once in position, it can be left well alone. You won't need to alter it again because it doesn't alter with magnification. Put the cap back on, careful not to twist it, and there you go, ready for use. An additional throw lever is supplied to make it faster and more easy to adjust magnification. You'll notice I've got the collar fitted here for a PARD 007S and the parallel profile of the tube makes it easy to fit on a collar like this for added night vision. Fast focus eyepiece underneath is not restricted at all. When your scope is zeroed on target correctly at your chosen range, wherever it may lay like this, remove the top cap like that. Place this to one side and lift the cap off. To set the zero stop, use the supplied Allen key to slacken the three grub screws on the internal collar here. And then turn the collar clockwise until it touches the tooth here. If you want to set any negative travel, perhaps leave it about there and tension it like that. But if you want to stop back at absolute zero, click it to there clockwise. Nip these in place, they don't need to be swung on too hard. And then to mark your zero distance, simply place the cap carefully back down with zero and the engraved with zero and the engraved white mark in the center and screw the cap back in position. From now, you can dial vertically upwards as much as you like using the underside vernier scale to count the number of turns with six milliradians per revolution, but when you want to go back to your original zero point, all the way back clockwise and it will stop back at zero. Setting the windage turret up is similar, but it doesn't actually have a zero stop as you wouldn't need one in that way. The windage dials three milliradians left and right of the center position. It 
So we're now gonna do a box test. We're shooting at 30 meters today on an air rifle. Now it's quite breezy, so it's not going to necessarily be perfect, but what this gives us is an idea of the precision of the click values and also whether it's going to return to zero if we dial up, left, down, right, up again, and then back to the center and whether it returns back to the original zero. Now the range we're doing, which is 30 meters, I'm going to use a value of say 30 clicks. So I'm going to go 15 clicks up, 15 clicks left to start, then 30 clicks down, 30 clicks right, 30 clicks back up, and then we're going to go 15 clicks left and 15 clicks down, which should theoretically place the group back on the zero position. Now, this is prone to failure because it's a windy, windy day, windy conditions, and it's not guaranteed to be perfect. But generally speaking, it gives you a very good idea of the repeat and back to zero capability of any optic at any range with any projectile within the limits of the rifle and the accuracy it's capable of and of course the wind conditions. So be realistic and you've got to expect the worst but hope for the best. So here goes nothing. First of all, we'll check the gun is zeroed. So it looks like it's shooting about a centimetre to 50 millimetres low. That doesn't particularly matter because what we're interested in is the dimensions of the square and on the values and return. So let's add 15 clicks up and let's add 15 clicks left and shoot three more. Note the wind dropped completely for those three shots. So now we're going to go all 30 clicks down. So this should shoot a group low left. It's fine. So now we want to move right and we're going to go 30 clicks to the right. Three more shots. And now 30 clicks back up to complete the box. Now those three seem to go very squirrely, so I'm just going to shoot a few more. Reload the magazine now. We should theoretically only need three more pellets at this point. But for some reason, that last group seemed to go very squirrely. I'm just checking I've dialed on the correct, correct correction, which I did. I'm watching the wind flag, which is mid-range between me and the target. I can see it actively with my left eye, trying my very best to minimise the length of this whole take. 
yet time it with dips in the wind variation. So three more top right and back comes the wind. And now we'll go back to zero. So we should be in the middle of the target. Again, just hold for the wind slightly. Or rather wait for the wind rather than holding for the wind. And are we back in the original group? We would appear to be so. Magnification is 6 to 24 times with a 50mm objective lens to allow the maximum daylight into the scope. Eye relief is 3.7 to 4 inches which is 93 to 101 millimeters. Filming with the pod does somewhat compromise image quality slightly but you get a good idea of the reticle with multiple holdover and multiple windage aim off markers. All in milliradians to correspond exactly with turret clicks. Click value on this scope is 10th milliradian, which means 1 cm at 100 meters. There are 6 milliradians per revolution, and in total 18.9 milliradians vertically and 11.6 milliradians horizontally for windage. Parallax is 10 meters to infinity. Overall length is 363 millimeters. Overall weight is 737 grams. The exit pupil is 9.1 to 2.2 millimeters from minimum to maximum magnification. Field of view at 100 meters is 6.2 to 1.5 meters. The MOA version of the rifle has 65 minutes of angle elevation with 40 minutes of angle windage. Click value is quarter MOA. There are 15 minutes of angle per turn of the elevation turret, which is 60 clicks. The reticle is an etched reticle and has multiple holdover dots for elevation and windage dots to compensate for crosswind. These are in perfect collaboration with the click values on the turret, which is the joy of the first focal plane system. Element offer their platinum lifetime warranty and the scope is waterproof, fogproof, shockproof and nitrogen purged. The scope is supplied with a sunshade, lens cloth and neoprene covers as well as the flip up caps for the objective and ocular lenses. I've had no problems at all using the scope for dialing out to 200 meters and beyond. Elevation and windage corrections have worked correctly alongside previously confirmed elevation and windage data using the same rifles and ammunition. I really enjoyed using the scope and found it confidence inspiring. It's worked well alongside data previously confirmed with rifles and ammunition within my armour and I think it's a great option for someone wanting to experiment more with longer range shooting potential or multi range shooting potential where they're dialing holdover all the time. When you go out and zero your rifle it's so easy just to get your smartphone out and take a picture of the turrets where they are because if you uh, have to start twiddling about with it before you've set it up or even when you're testing different ammunition types it makes life easy so you can always go back to where you were for your 100 meter zero so I was shooting there for 150 meters and I'm going to go there for 175 now.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed that little review. Please like, please subscribe, and please comment. Put your comments below because your comments are what drives me to make more of these videos. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.